Hi, all you developers who are using the OpenXML SDK for JavaScript. This is Eric White. Today, I am going to talk about opening template documents using the OpenXML SDK for JavaScript. I never recommend that developers use the OpenXML SDK and just start newing up a document from scratch. In other words, create the package and then create the main document part and then create the style part and so on. It's far easier to start with a template document. In the case of Word, even if you have a docx that has nothing in it, even if it only has a single blank paragraph, that's far easier than trying to create your settings part web settings part, style part, and so on. And of course, there are sophisticated OpenXML techniques where you want to have a template document that has content controls or other artifacts in it. And you want to open up that document and make changes to that document and then save it. You might be generating a single document, a single somewhat complex document, or you might be generating an entire set of documents from a data set. In all of these scenarios, you need to have a template document available to you to start modifying. There are two primary approaches that we can use with the OpenXML SDK for JavaScript. The first approach is to put your template document into a string literal. In a lot of ways, this is the simplest and fastest technique to use. I'll show you how we put that together. The other thing that you can do is you can use Ajax and get the template document from your web server. And you might use this approach if you have a template document that you want to change fairly often. You want to change it in easier fashion than going in and changing the string literal in a JavaScript program. I'm going to walk through both of these today. I'm going to open up the Visual Studio solution that comes with the OpenXML SDK for JavaScript. Example 6 right here shows both methods of getting a template document. I'll drop down here a little bit, and here is the template document. If you've looked at some of these other examples like browser, AMD, N, jQuery, N, and so on, these also all use this approach of putting a string literal in a template document. But when I showed those examples, I didn't show you how you can put this string literal together for yourself. And if we drop down here further, this Ajax method, this shows another approach to getting the template document. I'll walk through both. This template document here contains a base64 encoded ASCII string. Let's go generate one of those. I'm going to use PowerShell to do this generation. In Windows Explorer, I have my current directory set to the folder where I unzip the OpenXML SDK for JavaScript. I can start PowerShell up in this directory just by typing PowerShell into the address text box right here. But first, before I do anything here, I'm going to go show you something that I've added to my PowerShell profile. Here I'm in my Windows PowerShell folder. I'll open profile.ps1 in a text editor. And what I want to do is I want to show you this string right here. This string contains some C-sharp code that uses this method 2Base64 string in the system.convert class. This method takes a file name that you pass to it, and it dumps out the Base64 encoded ASCII of that file, whatever file name that you pass to it. And further, it chunks that Base64 string into multiple lines, each line having 76 characters in it. This is far more convenient to use than having one big, huge string. There's the corresponding method, which is convert from base64, which takes a file name and a base64 string, and it creates that binary file from the base64 string 
We're not using that today. I'm just mentioning it in passing. My profile then uses the add type commandlet to add the type that I just defined in that string. My profile then defines two methods, this convert to base64 and convert from base64 that use that type that I defined. I'll go back to my directory that contains the OpenXML SDK for JavaScript. I have a template document here. Let's take a look at this document. All this document has in it is a string. This is a template document. The only purpose of this string is so that we know that we're actually using this particular template document. And now if I enter convert to B64, when I run it, I see the base64 encoded ASCII string. I'll open the Visual Studio project and let's replace this base64 encoded ASCII with my string. Well, in this particular case, when I dump out the base64 encoded ASCII, it isn't in the form that's really convenient to use in a JavaScript program. JavaScript doesn't have multi-line string literals, at least currently. So we have to put together that multi-line string using the plus concatenation operator. So here's a little function. This function is convert docx to JavaScript literal and it adds all of the necessary syntax around that base64 encoded string so that we have a nice JavaScript literal. It also pipes it to the clip utility. This clip utility from Windows Vista and onwards, it exists as a little command line utility. Whatever you pipe to it, it puts on the clipboard. Now I've defined this convert docx to JavaScript literal. I can pass it the template document.docx, and when I run it, it doesn't output anything because it put everything onto the clipboard. And now I can come back over here to my example 06. I can select exactly the text that contains that string. And first of all, I'll just delete it so we can see, and then I'll paste that in there. And this is the string that was generated by that little function that I showed you. I'll put all of these bits of code onto the blog post that introduces this video so you can replicate and do the same task yourself if you like to. Now dropping down here, if we look at the jsdownload.create, I introduced this in the video that introduced the JavaScript OpenXML SDK. This method here that returns the data for the JS download button, it calls create document. And up here, create document opens up a new OpenXML package, passing in that template document string that I just initialized just now. It then creates a new paragraph. This new paragraph contains hello OpenXML world, template document was initialized by a string literal, and it adds that new paragraph after the first paragraph in that document, which there was only one paragraph in that document as we saw before. And then it returns the base64 string to jsdownload.create and you can then save that to your local hard drive. So let's run this example. There's our download button. I'll click it. It presents a save file dialog and I'll save this as test.docx. That'll be just fine. My little application tells me that the document was created. Let's go look at that document. There it is. And when I open it, I see the string that was in the template document. This is a template document. And I can see the paragraph that was added, hello OpenXML world, initialized by a string literal. This approach is really convenient. When we're Doing the same operation using AJAX, we have to be prepared to do it in an asynchronous mode because that's how AJAX works. Having the string literal right there in your JavaScript application is just an easy way to get a template document. However, you may have 
the need to change your template document more than once. You can also see that this approach, it has fine performance. It's really fast. No issues with performance. Let's see how we do it with Ajax. In the folder that you download that contains the OpenXML SDK for JavaScript, there is also a template document b64.txt. All this is is the base64 version of this template document.docx. I'll show you how I created that. It's even easier. I'll convert to B64 that template document and I'll just output that to template document B64.txt and we're done. Back in example six, we can see that this Ajax method here uses as a URL this template document B64.txt. Now because I'm running locally here, I can put in this name and it's a local name and the web server will find it right here. You most likely will have to put in the complete URL to wherever you store files in your web server. The method to operate on this template document is the same as the method to operate on the document created by the string literal with the exception that it tells us that this was downloaded from the server by Ajax. And what happens is that when you open this particular HTML file, it runs this Ajax request and it asynchronously gets the template document from the location that you specify and it stores that base64 in this variable Ajax document. And down here in this data function, I have to uncomment out the return to the call of create document and instead I'm going to return the Ajax document. I'll save it, run it, click save. I'll tell it I want to save to test two. Here's my test two document. Let's open it and there we see it. We see our template document was downloaded from server by Ajax. Being able to open up a template document for modification is a really important tool in your toolbox, regardless of whether you are operating on word processing ML documents, spreadsheet ML documents, or presentation ML documents, you always want to start with a blank document or a blank workbook or a blank presentation and then start adding things to it. And so you'll need a way to get that template document. And these are the two approaches that I've used to get a template document in my JavaScript development. Thanks for watching. See you next time.